to go. Time to go. We're on the hunt. But first, we need some coffee and donuts. Here's the plan for today. We're on our way to Port Townsend today to look for an Airbnb property. If you've seen any of the recent videos, we've looked at a couple places, an A-frame a couple weeks ago, um, another place before that, I forget what it was. Um, we've put a couple offers in, but keep getting outbid. So we actually found another A-frame that hit the market a couple days ago, and uh, it's right near Port Townsend, so we're gonna go check it out and hopefully submit another offer. So here we go. We did have to get up at 5.30 in order to leave the house by 6.30 in order to catch the 7.10 ferry in order to make our 9.30 appointment. So it is a bit of a trek out to the peninsula this morning. So first I want to show you the house. Uh, we're visiting an A-frame, very cool design. It does need a little bit of work from what I can tell from the pictures, but uh, we'll have a look at that when we get there. I do want to talk about numbers too, because um, this whole Airbnb business thing uh, is kind of complex and there's a lot to, uh, to think about and to consider. Well, yeah, the other thing with Airbnb is that there's the potential for a lot of money, but it's a lot. It's more work than if you just bought a rent, like a long-term rental property. So you have to be willing to do a little more work, a little more stress, but I think it could pay off. And I think that this house, uh, I think the numbers could work. It could be really good. And then we're gonna get some lunch. We're going to the bathroom. <laughs> So we're in a uh, little community just outside of Port Townsend. It's maybe about an hour and a half with the ferry away from Seattle. And uh, this is a very cool A-frame. It needs quite a bit of work, but I really like the design here. Let me show you. There, there are cards upstairs. Oh, I didn't see that. Are we doing a tour? Yeah. Did you show the outside? I did. Okay. I think we definitely need to glamp up the outside with some outdoor furniture. Did you see the view? Yes. Okay. Um, very cozy. And from the living room, you can see the water. Super cute. And then we go back into the kitchen. It's definitely uh, out of date, but it kind of works just because it has that cozy cozy vibe. I mean, someday we would probably want to update this kitchen, but it has everything you need. Mini, mini oven, mini stove. And then the first bedroom is actually pretty big, don't you think? And it has a sliding door out to a private deck off the back. And then we gotta show them Celie's door. This is so cute in this closet here. Look at this door. It's just Celie's size. Seely, you can go through the door. I can just picture her playing here someday, <laughs> going, get out to the kitchen through here. <laughs> through here. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the upstairs. I'm not taking the baby upstairs. Do you want to introduce Joanna? Should we introduce Joanna? <laughs> this is Joanna. Hi, everybody. <laughs> She's living here for a year as an au pair from Colombia. This is her first week and she's the best. She's amazing, and Celie loves her. And now we can safely go up the stairs without the baby. Okay. Ooh, okay, the last A-frame had that spiral staircase that I hated. This is probably almost as dangerous, but I like it a little bit better than the spiral. So there's this little loft. Right now they have it staged to sleep one person, which I think we would leave so that the whole place sleeps five. I don't know if you would actually use this little private deck, but for photos, for Airbnb, it's super cute. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I would drink coffee right here. Let me show you everything that needs to be fixed. The wooden roof needs to be replaced. The back deck is rotting. Some of the windows have failed seal. Electrical service won't support a new heat system. The front deck is leaking into the garage. 
I don't know. I think a lot of people will want it because it's so cute. But when we when we uh, last time we drove by this house last week, <laughs> we couldn't go in because it was being Airbnb'd out, and there was someone staying here. <laughs> we drove by, and it was like a millennial couple sitting on the deck in like plaid and beanies, like snuggling, looking at the water. <laughs> and we knew in that moment that this would be a money maker. <laughs> Even though it needs quite a bit of work and those projects will add up quite a bit, uh, I think it's a great investment. Like Kendall said, it appeals to the millennials, so that's kind of perfect. Uh, this beach access is also included, so that's really cool. It's really cute. I love the project and uh, we're thinking to put it on Airbnb in order to pay for the mortgage and then uh, you know, just use it as a family and friend vacation spot too. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go grab some lunch and then uh, we're gonna talk about some of the numbers because it's potentially super profitable too. <laughs> that is a huge mess on your bottom. <laughs> this is, we're using so many. Okay, let's talk about numbers now. I've been pretty inspired by people like Rob Bilt and Shelby and Monica Church, who've all been championing starting an Airbnb business. Now, Kendall and I are self-employed, so we don't have an employer-run retirement plan, and we have to be a little bit more creative when thinking about the future. And this is our plan. We're looking to purchase a house for about $800,000 or $900,000, and it's expensive, but we're looking to market it as a bit of a luxurious experience. Something that is close to the water, that has a little bit of a view, that you can um, you know, host groups at, and has a little bit of a cool factor, so that it performs well on Airbnb's platform. We've been uh, pretty lucky so far to find these two A-frames that are already currently short-term rentals, and the sellers were generous enough to share some of their numbers. And these places are making about $5,000 to $10,000 a month, which is great. Uh, it kind of depends on the season, you know, more in the summer, less in the winter. And our expenses are going to be about four to $5,000 a month when you factor in uh, the mortgage and any utility costs, uh, the garbage, thinking about fixing or repairing anything on the house. So it's definitely cash flowing and the numbers look pretty good. And when thinking about it from a retirement perspective, in 20 or 30 years, the house is gonna appreciate and we'll also pay off the mortgage. So we can always cash out our investment at any time and just sell the house. Now we're running into an interesting problem here when we're putting together an offer. We have to balance what we're offering against what we think the house will appraise at. In this hot, hot real estate market, everything's going for over asking. And these cool A-frames are definitely going way over asking. This one's listed at $550,000 and uh, it's gonna sell nowhere near that. So uh, we're calculating uh, coming in at about 800,000 and we still might get how bad at that. But the lender is only going to give us enough to cover what they think it's worth. So if the appraisal comes in low, then we're going to have to make up the difference in cash. And uh, you know, there's only a finite amount of money, so we have to balance uh, a possible low appraisal, a 20% down payment, furnishing the place, fixing up the place if it needs it. Alex is on the phone with the listing agent right now, finding out if we got the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks for letting me know. We did not get the house. Are you serious? As I was putting together this video about finding the perfect Airbnb property, I started seeing all of these articles about people booking Airbnbs in Ukraine as a way to get money directly to those in need. And I think it's a very cool idea. But after a little bit of research, I found out that a lot of these Airbnbs in Ukraine are run by big property management firms, a lot of them based in Russia. So I then found Airbnb.org, which is Airbnb's nonprofit arm. Now, this video isn't sponsored in any way, uh, and I've mostly been using the term Airbnb as like a generic Kleenex brand 
term, but I have been really impressed by what, by what I'm seeing on Airbnb.org. In the past, they've committed to providing housing to people in need during uh, natural disasters, during COVID, and uh, during humanitarian crises like the one that's happening in Ukraine right now. They're committing to housing 100,000 Ukrainian refugees, and Kendall and I are totally on board. We made a donation, and I hope that you will too. You can find a link on Airbnb's homepage, but I'm also gonna provide it down below so that you can just go directly there. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. And if you're thinking about making a home in Seattle or buying an investment property, send me a message. Bye.